Hey guys, it's Tom from Something RS, and welcome to the Rune Labs. I'm going to be taking a look at some of the more popular and supported uh, ideas, and then I'll be looking around for some hidden gems that I think you should go and support. It should be noted that this month, which is April, uh, they're, they're only going to be accepting medium-sized skilling ideas. So this is things like Herblore Habitat, Ectophontus, you know, things that train skills and have like a few functions or whatever, you know. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the more popular ideas. The first of which is Elf City Waterfall Fishing. So this is a high level fishing spot for the Elven City, which requires level 93 fishing and level 90 agility. And you'll need a mithril grapple to climb up a mountain, which sounds kind of cool, I'll be honest. Um, XP rates look pretty decent, although I wouldn't take these as gospel, to be honest. I'll probably change them. Um, <laughs> he wants the uh, fish named after him, of course. Why wouldn't you? And some of the rewards would include a crystal fishing rod, which gives a small bonus. I assume that's to fishing. And other rewards, so room for interpretation there. It's pretty neat. You can choose to cook them, but they'll disappear. So you can, I interpret that as you can either cook them for cooking experience, so think corrupted ore, or you can trade them in at the reward shop so you, they won't be tradable or edible you'll just be able to get rewards or XP from them so that's pretty cool I guess and it fits the month's theme of uh, medium sized skilling updates even though I'm 99 fishing I would probably do this just for a crystal fishing rod because why not alright let's look at another popular idea Next up we have a new player owned house room, the museum. Free up bank space and get XP. Ooh, sounds interesting. So this, I will dissolve this into a small bite sized chunk. It's essentially a room where you can put old quest items that are clogging up your bank. And um, you can get divination XP by uh, making magical orbs once per week, I should say. And uh, they allow you to replay cutscenes from quests and such. So that's a nice little idea. And you get a nice chunk of Divination XP in the process. So that's pretty cool. And this part I particularly like. Test the security system of your museum by breaking into it like in the heist movies and gain thieving XP. I love this idea. Love it, love it, love it. In fact, I'm going to support it. There we go. You guys should do the same. And you can also do research. So, yeah, you can hire an NPC to do research for you, and it'll give you some XP. So, more XP, more skilling. Hooray. It fits the theme, kind of. So, let's look at another idea. And last up for the more popular ideas is Marida the Wandering Slayer Master. So this is a Slayer D&D, distraction and diversion. Um, essentially this is a new Slayer Master that would you would be able to get a task from in addition to the current Slayer Masters. And you can sort of customize how big the task is that you get from this guy and it would scale to players of all levels so anyone can use this guy but he will be located randomly in the world so you have to go out and find him the reward you'd get from this slayer master would be attachments that you can't get anywhere else so they'd be untradeable uh, this would be things like the ability to make the defensive slayer helm which boosts defense while on a task a pocket slot item that improves drop chances sounds a little bit OP uh, <laughs> while while you're on a slayer task that is and weapon and armor attachments to improve damage and defense against slayer uh, targets 
And there's also going to be a Slayer dungeon underneath the Karazi jungle. So that's like the southernmost part of Karamja, I think. And this dungeon would require 91 Slayer. The, the creatures within this dungeon would be stronger than normal. And the, therefore they would offer better experience and drops. And that's pretty much it. It sounds like a really nice, simple idea, and I absolutely love it. And this one actually has a JMod response from Mod Osborne, saying that some of the aspects of this idea would need to be tweaked a tiny bit, but the idea as, as a whole would still be able to be implemented. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and support that one, because it's really cool. And now to find some not so popular but good ideas. Okay, so it's hard for me to get excited about fletching because, you know, it's pretty much everyone's first 99. But I saw this idea and I thought it was pretty good. Essentially, fletching in the artisan workshop for ceremonial crossbows and bows and such. So you would be making the crossbow stocks or limbs for ranged weapons in this artisan workshop. And you would get like cool looking crossbows, so that's always a good thing. But this could also extend to things like uh, producing new types of ammo, um, you know, working with experimental flights and feathers. Um, okay. And rewards could be things like particle effects for shooting bolts and arrows, and, you know, the imagination could run wild with this idea. I think it's really cool, and it only has three supporters at the minute, so if you like this idea, go and support it, like I just have. Next idea. Okay, this one's nice and short, and it's phrased a bit poorly, but essentially the home teleport spell uh, getting a 99 skill will give you another option to uh, graphically override the look of this teleport spell. So, for example, if you have 99 fire making, instead of just sitting on the floor for a bit, you'd get to turn into a fire spirit um, before you teleport. And for divination, you could uh, sink into an energy hole. Or for fishing, you can cannonball into a puddle that appears in the ground for some reason. So this is really not a very important idea, but nonetheless I like it. So I'm going <laughs> to throw it a support, because I would, I would love to be able to jump in a puddle. So yeah. And let's do one more. No. S no, stop it. No livid farm. No. No. Okay, but seriously, here is the last one. This one is called Bane Equipment Expansion. For those of you who don't know what Bane Equipment is, I don't blame you. <laughs> you can make Dragon Bane Bolts, I think, and that's pretty much about it. The, I'm sure there's some other things as well, but it's basically useless, kind of. Well, not entirely, but kind of. So this idea is to expand Bane equipment to affect ghosts and demons. And you can craft more specific equipment like rapiers. So you can, for example, you could have a Dragon Bane rapier. Who wouldn't want that, right? Yeah? And you could have like armors. So ghost Bane armor. So yeah, nice little idea. I think that would be a medium-sized project, and uh, I'm going to support it. And I think you should too. Oh, I have to log in again. Whoops. <laughs> but, yeah, that brings us nicely to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you didn't, then be sure to tell me. And I'll see you in the next video.